This is Dina Marie, and I'm back with Franciscan friar, Father Dan Petit. Today, we're talking a little bit about some of our Franciscan saints that come up in the month of July. So again, I encourage you to look at your calendar and look at that Catholic calendar and find out who is the saint of the day. St. Bonaventure, we celebrate this month, as well as St. Lawrence. And so, uh, Father Dan, as we come back, St. Lawrence, there's a lot of St. Lawrence's, but let's look at St. Lawrence of Brindisi, uh, both a priest and again, doctor of the church. Church. Yes, yes. Uh, good to be with you again. And um, this this particular saint, uh, Saint Lawrence, uh, is from the uh, 16th century. He was born in July of 1559, which is right in the wake of the reformations begun by Luther in 1517. So he's one of the great saints of the what we would call Catholic Reformation, the, the, the attempt to restore Catholic faith after it had been devastated by the Protestant, uh, the Protestant revolt, uh, reformers. So he's, he figures in quite prominently in his ability to preach and teach, and he became obviously a doctor of the church as a result. Right. Give us a sense of how he came into being a Franciscan. What do we know a little bit? I mean, obviously there's such a, um, the sense of Catholicism in his day is, is there's a lot of pushback. There's a lot of persecution. So how did he come to really becoming Franciscan and then really being a great preacher and, and obviously a priest in the church? Well, um, he uh, lost his parents, interestingly enough, at a young age. And so he ended up after their deaths at the age of 16, he ended up going to Venice to um, go to the College of St. Mark there in Venice, which is the school attached to the Basilica of St. Mark. That's the Cathedral Basilica there at, uh, at Venice. And while he was there, he got to know the, friend, the Capuchin Franciscans and ended up joining them at the age of 16. And um, with them, he started to study philosophy and theology right there in Venice and was ordained at the young age of 23 years old as a Capuchin uh, Franciscan and a priest um, under the name of Lawrence because he um, uh, excelled in languages. He spoke Latin, Hebrew, Greek, German, Bohemian, Spanish, and French. He was so good with languages. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, give us a sense of just his life. So he studied the priesthood and did he travel a bit? Obviously he must have written to be a doctor of the church um, or a lot of his teachings in written form. Yeah, well, you know, uh, because of the Protestant Reformation, which puts so much of an emphasis on the Bible, he was highly esteemed as a someone that commented on scripture because he knew Greek and Hebrew Mm -hmm. fluently. In fact, um, Pope Clement VIII first commissioned him to preach among the Jews in Italy, and they thought, he, he, from his knowledge of Hebrew, it was so good that they thought he was a Jewish convert to Catholicism. He was so excellent and excelled at it. Um, but see, this is what he did. He could read the original Greek New Testament. He could read the original Hebrew Old Testament. And that put him highly regarded, even in the eyes of the Protestant reformers who had such an emphasis on getting back to scripture. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, um, when he would preach, he went on several missions that were requested of him by the Pope they he would enter into debate with the um, Protestant reformers and win over a lot of Catholics back to the Catholic faith based on his ability to go toe to toe with them in the debates on scripture. Mm, I love it. We're talking with Father yeah. Dan as we reflect on some of our Franciscan saints, a Saint Lawrence. Uh, give us a sense of his Franciscan spirituality. How can we see that Capuchin, you know, the Capuchin Franciscans that, that he first in, encountered, how did they really influence his life? Well, the Capuchins, of course, were um, born from the hermitages in Italy. So they have a burning spirit of 
prayer and contemplation to them that really marks St. Lawrence of Brindisi. That's where he's coming from first and foremost is a really deep-seated prayer and contemplation of the word of God and scripture. And um, from spending hours of meditation and contemplation and prayer. So that's the first thing about him that is so um, obvious when you read his sermons and also uh, study his life. The other thing that is remarkable about him is several occasions, he was appointed as a papal emissary. That's someone that has been designated by the Pope to go and so peace between warring factions within the um, papal states. So if there was one city fighting another city, for example, he was sent to Naples one time uh, to sow peace in Naples between some of the nobles that were there. Well, peace is another thing that was such a hallmark of Francis's life, being able to help enemies turn to each other again in goodwill. This was another thing that was evident in St. Lawrence's life. He was able to actually help bring about peace when uh, the Pope would send him on these missions. Wow. Father Dan, when we look at these saints, St. Bonaventure and St. Lawrence, you know, what could be our takeaways as we recognize their feast days, but ways that they can help us today in our daily lives? You know, when I look at these two saints in particular, the, the phrase that comes to my mind is Jesus in John's gospel says, without me, you can do nothing. Now, a lot of times when we hear that, we say, well, without me, you can do some things and not others. So go do what you can. And when you run out of resources, then come to me and ask for help. Mm. These two understood that without Christ, we literally, that we can, there's, we can't even sneeze in the direction of salvation. And so a vital living relationship with Christ in prayer was essential to these two saints. And it's so evident in everything they did. And I think that's one thing we can definitely take away from them. Right. Right. And Father Dan, as we look at the lives of the saints in our own lives, just maybe a suggestion you have of how to maybe keep them part of our lives, part of our personal prayer life, our family prayer life, but just really to be more recognizing the saints, but also asking them to be part of our, be part of our road to heaven. Well, you know, they do say that um, the saints choose us. And the way you find out who they are is pay attention. Who are the saints that appeal to you? Um, that may be the indication that you're being invited into a relationship with one of them. And for a reason, sometimes <clears throat> our Lord can send them and say, you know, I want you to get to know that guy down there or that gal over there. And we need to pay attention. Like, who are the saints that appeal to us? Read about them. Get a life about them. They have something to teach you, and then you strike up a relationship. I mean, I know you can't see them, but they're there, and you can start to converse with them, and they can start to instruct you as you read their writings or you read about their life. Um, and I think that's one of the things we need to be aware of is uh, they do choose us, and there's reasons for that, that they choose us, and we need to start to cultivate that relationship with them as a result. Absolutely. I think St. Francis is one that's been capturing my heart. So I'm very grateful for you helping us to really open up these Franciscan moments. Again, we've been talking with Father Dan. Father Dan, when he's not traveling around, maybe giving a conference here or there, he serves at the St. Andrew Catholic Church in Fort Worth, Texas. So Father, for you and the Franciscans that serve, God bless you in your ministry. And I'm looking forward to the next edition of Franciscan Moments we can have together. Will you help us close this time together, leading us in prayer? Sure. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for raising up among us these great saints and examples for us to follow on our way to you. Help us ever heed their voice and heed their lessons. Help us ever 
allow ourselves to be instructed by so great uh, examples of faith and virtue in our lives. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. And with your and spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Dan. Have a blessed day. Thank you. You too.